everybody, it's the Little Code Ninja here. And today, we're going to learn all about sounds and sprite properties. I can't wait. Okay, let's start with sounds. So, next to the Costumes tab, we have Sounds. Let's click on that. Now you can see there's a meow sound. Let's click the play button. As you can see, it plays a meow sound. But, what if I want this cat to do another sound? Well... You can see there's a small sound editor here, but I don't really want to go too deep into that. Anyways, let's go right here into choose a sound, and then let's click this, and there we go. I want to see if there's uh, if there's anything related to cat. So there we can see there's actually another meow. So I want to see what this sounds like. So I'm going to make my mouse hover over the play button, and it will give you a preview. I like that. So now, let's click on it to choose it. There we go, we have Meow too. This one is calm. You know what, I think that these Meows aren't very nicely named. I don't want Meow and Meow too. So I'm going to rename this by clicking this text box next to sound. Now I'm gonna call it Sad Meow. Actually, this one is the happy one, sorry. <laughs> Happy Meow, right? That one's going to be Happy Meow. And then this one, this one, Meow 2, I want that to be called Sad Meow. There we go. This is Happy Meow. This is Sad Meow. Those are the basics of sound. Now, you can record your own sound and the surprise and everything, just like with sprites. But I don't really want to record a sound right now. We can do that uh, somewhere else. Also, as a shortcut, if you just click on it, you don't have to click choose a sound. You can just click this button right here and it will take you directly to that area. Okay, now that we're back, let's see if Bananas has any sounds. To see the sounds of something, go next to costume and it will show you all the sounds. This one's chomp when you're quickly eating it and this one's bite. That's pretty funny. Okay, now that we've covered that a little bit, backdrops usually don't have sounds. They don't have many sounds. This one has pop. Easy. Okay, so that's how sounds work. Uh, if you want to do code with sounds, I don't want to do a lot of code right now, but you can click the sound button, and then you can take out the play sound until done. If you just take play sound or start sound, it will start doing the sound, but then it won't finish the sound usually. So now we can make it play Happy Meow, and we can click this. Like you could see there. Remember in my tutorial where I showed you the green flag? So now we can grab a when green flag click, and then we can click the green flag. Now if we wanted to play Sad Meow, we can click this arrow and then choose Sad Meow. Now click the green flag and it plays our Sad Meow. We can switch back to Happy Meow. But always, always, always make sure that you're playing it in the right sprite. Generally in Scratch code, each sprite has their own code, right? So this bananas, you see this code goes. So only the cat is doing this code. So make sure that if you want bananas to play a sound, then you put this inside of bananas, not cat. For some reason, my project is having trouble saving, but that's all right. Okay, now that we understand sounds a bit and how we can generally use them, I'm going to explain something called sprite properties. Sprite properties tell you, you know how everything has properties, right? Things that describe the way it is, where it is, how it works with the environment. So sprites have different properties. First of all, they have their name. So if we want to rename something, remember it says sprite, so we can just change what's in this box and type in cat. And we've called this sprite cat. You can see that it changes. Now we can show and hide it by clicking this eye. You have to click the eye uh, that you want. The one in blue is the one that's enabled right now. So right now, visible is enabled. Now we can make it invisible. So now invisible is enabled. Invisible is disabled. Next, we have size. With size, we can tell the program how big we want our sprite to be. So if I want my cat to be double the size, boom, he's double the size. Isn't that crazy? 
I can also make him half his original size, not 500. Holy God. Okay, now he's half of his size. He's so tiny. And uh, the default size is 100, so that's going to be handy to know. All right. Now there is direction. Direction just says the way your character is facing. By default, they're facing 90 degrees. They're facing straight. But you can change that. You can either drag this arrow to change the direction he's facing in like that or you can just type in here right so i can make him go 180 i think he'll be facing down yeah now he's facing down so just like that that's kind of how how it works remember the default for this is 90 in case you want to make it back to normal just click anywhere else to make the direction thing go away now you have x and y X and Y are something in math, but it's pretty simple to understand. Basically, X and Y tell you where a character is. So the X is how far right or how far left they are. And the Y is how far up or how far down they are. So if you set the X to zero and the Y to zero, that means that it is right in the center right here. So that's the, the starting point. But if you make x50, for example, then he's going to go 50 to the right. And if you make y like 100, right, what would happen then? Well, he'll go up 100, right? And if you, you can make y less than 0 to make it go down 100. So you'll do that. And now he's x negative, y negative 100, not x. So it might be a, a little bit complicated. I would say don't worry about it because you can just remember, you don't actually need this to move your sprites. You can just click and drag like that. But it's useful to know what X and Y mean because it can be handy sometimes. Plus, when you want to move stuff in your code, it will be like, hey, go to this X and Y. So that's a, it's a good idea to know what that is. Now that we've covered those, I'm going to see the same thing here for bananas. I'm going to show you backdrops. Backdrops are actually really simple. They don't have any properties. So yay. But yeah, really the only things you do with backdrops is like switching backdrops, playing sounds, and uh, yeah, that's, that's basically all. And doing some math. That's like all. Backdrops don't move anything that way. You can't move a cat from the backdrop. Remember, if you want the cat to move, then you have to click on him and move. So backdrops don't have all of the different types of code. Because you can't move a backdrop 10 steps, right? So you can see that. It says, hey, there's no motion blocks. So that is Sprite 101. Now that we understand how Sprite works... We're going to start experimenting a little bit more with code in the next video. I can't wait. Have a great day. See ya! Little Code Ninja out!